Alright guys, such a back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And after all the optic dramas finally come to a close going into the Major 2 qualifiers, Scumbo has revealed his perspective on all the leaks that were coming out over the last couple of weeks and over the Christmas and New Year period, and his frustration with those discussions of the internal team dynamics, and also slash having a few spicy words for 10th going into Major 2. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I mentioned my team earlier today for Fantasy. This is Aix's team. Not too dissimilar to be fair. I mean, actually, it is kind of dissimilar, to be fair. We've got Shotzi here for $5 as well. He's got Kenny for 5 Dranza for 8 and Skump for 7 So, actually, Aix is going pretty all-in on Optic here, which is kind of surprising in a way. Kind of funny to me, because Aix said that FaZe were going to go... I think he said on the fact that they were going to go 5-0 and o FaZe in the qualifiers, and then they were going to win the major only dropping three maps. So, if that's the case, why not pick some FaZe players? But, you know, whatever. That's his team, and um, it's a pretty good team, to be fair. I think he's done a decent job putting this one together. Now, we've definitely got to talk about this. So, Ryan pointed this out on Reddit and also on on Twitter last night and I was taking a look at this to try and figure out whether like um you know this is some sort of mistake and it may be a mistake but actually looking at all the details the CDL have provided so far this season this may be legit so basically what he's pointed out here you go onto the website and uh, you find the following so this is welcome to the COD League season format all this type of stuff it's the awful website they have but um yeah here we go season format so tournament stakes are higher than ever in 2023 all 12 teams in college in the COD League will compete in five double elimination majors across the regular season in a hybrid LAN online format. Each major will be on LAN, a live audience in attendance. All good stuff, all exactly what is expected, all 12 teams competing. Now, the second paragraph, though, it says the following. These three qualifying weeks leading up to the major are now even more crucial because at the end, only the eight top seeds will advance to compete in the major. So this is like, obviously, okay, back in the Modern Warfare season, only eight teams got invited to the home series anyway, but there are way more of them. Nowadays, there's majors. Last year, all the teams were there. The top Eight teams started in winners brackets, the bottom four teams started in the losers bracket, and that was a perfectly fine format, I thought. Okay, sometimes the kind of tiebreakers are a bit messed up, but at least every team from the online matches gets to actually attend to the majors. And also, there was plenty of time, right? It's a four-day event. There's plenty of time to run that bracket. Yes, okay, I think Saturday was quite a long day, or maybe it was Friday. There was quite a long day. But on the whole, like we could fit all those matches in no problem at all. Now what the CDL website says, this could be a mistake. And as I'm sure some people are pointing out, the first paragraph does seem to contradict with the seconds but then again right all 12 teams compete in the majors but um you know they kind of can the way they phrase this it's like the majors are hybrid LAN online format so it kind of implies that what they mean by the major is the entire stage in which case all 12 teams do kind of compete right so I think Benjay and the team discussed this on the reddit and said it must be old copy from a couple of years ago but um I don't really see how it can be old copy because it's all updated for 2023 so look I don't know I hope this obviously isn't the case we need all 12 teams there there's no reason why there can't be all 12 teams there. But the website says that only eight are going to go. And it also says, right, that only eight teams get to go to the playoffs. And I did try and look back at the initial season format they announced last season, or last year, right, in 2022, at the end of it, before the season began. And that they didn't actually mention then whether there were going to be 12 or eight teams of the majors. Of course, major one, there were 16 teams, all 12 teams plus four amateur teams. So you'd think they could do at least 12. But um, yeah, very interesting if this is the case that we get to like the second week of the qualifiers and they drop the bomb on us, then actually, yeah, only eight of these teams get to go to the major, which um, I don't believe is a known thing. Hopefully this is not true, but I just thought I'd mention it because a good spot there by Ryan that uh, might have some bases in reality or they'll just update the copy, which is what I'm hoping is going to happen. Also update on the Vegas Legion side. My league PC keeps freezing. So yeah, not a good look for Vegas right now. Okay, I apparently you found the culprits, the GPU or something. But uh, yeah, Vegas having a tough time, especially because they still can't really sort out this facility. He's been trying over the last few days to have someone sponsor them or pay for this facility. As Clay says, two bedroom apartment for Tiege and Byron to live in for the next eight months. Come on now, I know someone's got it like that. I've seen your house, brother. They can move in there. Luna's like, absolutely not. Of course, I'm, you know, close to a significant other. Tiege can live under the stairs like Harry Potter. So, I mean, yeah, maybe they're not so keen to do that. And he even goes on to say to Mr. Beast again, want to be in the CDL, please, Mr. Beast, respond. Like, we need the, we need the help here. So, I don't know. I, I know people were saying in the comments the other day, let's do the kind of tactical around foundation here to get these guys some support. Like, um, man, Vegas are really a poverty org, to be fair. And, like, 
Look, like, Birdman comes in hard with this, in fairness. I do feel bad for Clay on this one, but he was getting ratioed again and again by Birdman here. So two grown men can't come up with two grand in rent is crazy. We're mainly talking about the facility to play out of. We obviously understand it's a long shot, so what's the next best option? Obviously, nobody's paying for that, not even your poverty org. So I imagine two people who want at least 50k could make that work. And, um, you know, Clay gives his response. And, I mean, look, Birdman's just straight up roasting him in the organization. I do feel kind of bad because it's not Clay's fault this whole situation's going down. It's, well, okay, Vegas Legion is going to do Legion things. It is what it is. Clay then calls them out for kind of hating on their teammates in the situation. And then like, he goes on to say, Legion is a poverty organ. I don't think anyone disagrees on that. What would he prefer I call them? Horrible, embarrassing, awful. Pick your favorite word. So I guess we're going to leave it there for now. Wishing the best for Clay and the boys, but it's not going to be online. It's not going to be ideal, sorry, for their online situation with uh, the current state of affairs. Also, just some drama because there's drama everywhere, as always, between Prostini and Ghosty. Not exactly sure what this is about, to be honest, but um, he talks a bit of trash to him here. Probably as a result of some of the action in the Elite last night. And also this from Slasher as we discussed this temp clip where, you know, again, we're here in 2023 and there's still no red dots on the mid weapon. Slasher is not so happy about it. There was a funny clip I've got to share between Slasher and Temp here where, like, these guys are pretty good mates to a certain extent. They've played with each other a couple of times in the past as well. But Slasher kind of asking Temp here to put a bit more respect on his name. People are pinging better online in their scrims, at least in challengers, right, in their scrims than they do on LAN. That is I, crazy. I run at Slasher on LAN. Oh. For years, you were sitting in the stands watching Slasher play on LAN. Oh! Oh! oh. No. Oh. What the hell? Don't get me on you now, Don. Oh, when did he speak? I know you're sitting in your chair. Oh! oh. Slasher, 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 slasher. Now, of course, it's Scump's final season in Call of Duty, at least uh, to our current knowledge. I think he did mention a while ago during the drama that um, I think he said at one point, it's meant to be my final season and all this is going on and I don't want all this chaos to be going on, which um, is probably true. Not sure why this clip keeps freezing on me here. Let me try and fast forward. It doesn't seem to want to work. We'll go to the COD League side and we'll see if this wants to work from here. But um, I think he was mentioning that like, okay, it's meant to be my final season. So maybe there's a 1% chance that he sticks around going forward into 2024, but probably not going to happen. But a massive spanner has been thrown in the work of Scump's last year here in the first season of Modern Warfare 2, just with all this dashy changing stuff, who comes in, the Pred situation, the RC stuff, it's been absolute chaos. Now, a lot of this was leaked, right? In the early days of, um, let's say, immediately after the Major, there was a lot of leaks coming out. We saw the RC stuff, we saw the Pred stuff, we then saw the Beans stuff arise, which apparently was never going to be a thing anyway. There was all sorts of names being thrown around, even Clayster was talked about, apparently they did actually briefly consider Clayster as well, so there was some validity to that. But for a couple of weeks there, there was so many rumors and then everything died down a lot over you know kind of after Christmas going into the new year there were no real new rumors coming alive until the Pred thing then kicked up again and then they eventually settled on Hook after Los Angeles Grillers changes. Now there were lots of leaks about this and it must be said that when these kind of leaks do arise it probably does affect the team internally right because I think even when the Pred rumor was initially happening Shotzi said they weren't considering Pred at the time but then they thought you know what let's try and get Pred why not we'll might as well give it a go and they almost got the deal done. Maybe as somewhat of a surprise to the team in the first place. So, you know, the fact that these leaks arise does kind of affect the way the teams work internally, especially if, let's say, Optograph and negotiations with a certain player, and then it's leaked that that's going on. It does affect the dynamic of those relationships. And Scump, obviously, understandably, isn't happy about the way this has all been talked about over the last couple of weeks. And it's um, basically what he's, okay, he's joking around here, right? But he's kind of threatening to leak it again for views next year, maybe implying that kind of some of the activities that have been going on over the past few weeks aren't so you know he's not so happy about i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be all up in team next year i'm just gonna be all up in that you know what i'm saying next year i'm gonna get intel on our roster and leak it on my stream for views that's my whole strategy you guys that's my whole that's what i'm going for next year I'm going to infiltrate the team with trust and leak their for views. I'm going to be a content. I'm going to be with them all the time. They're going to be talking about, it. I'm just going to be sitting there, fly on the wall, hanging out. Nothing's wrong. Seth's over there. He's cool, right? He's done this. Nope. No. No. He's not cool. 
So I thought some interesting statements there from Scumright. Of course, at the end of the day, you're not going to stop, um, you know, people leaking stuff. And if they're getting their leaks from sources internally, because, you know, apparently the RCT stuff that was coming out from CDL Scrim Intel was coming. I think even uh, Ben Jay Nassim kind of said this, that Optic were interested. Certainly they were in RCTs, and it turns out they were in the end in Preds. It wasn't like, um, you know, RCTs' team LAG or Preds team Seattle had agreed, but there was some interest there. And there was a question as to whether over the coming weeks after Christmas, they'd kind of plugged that leak somehow just because like you know the kind of rumors that we were getting coming to light weren't really they were kind of getting shut down after Christmas right so whether Optic kind of figured out where these leaks are coming through or exactly what's going on that I guess is the key cobra like I don't think Skump can be too mad in a way if you know if there's people in his own organization that are leaking this stuff to the public then it's kind of you know shutting down those leaks that should be the priority rather than getting frustrated about the leaks themselves but I understand the fact that it does affect Skump's situation and it's obviously not fun to be on a team and everyone's talking on the timeline about what's going on. But I thought the other part was interesting as well. It was like, oh yeah, I'm going to get in the corner and pretend that I'm just friends with these guys and then I'm going to leak everything publicly for views. Is like, um, I don't know who he's talking about there exactly, right? I don't know if he's talking about this channel. Because on this channel, we don't really leak anything that's brand new, right? It's kind of like, I just wait to see what happens and then we talk about it. So, you know, like rather than go and like dig in for my own intel or stuff, I could try really hard and get some juicy stuff, but I don't think it's really necessary because everything just happens on Twitter anyway, then we just dive into it. So, you know, easy talking about what's happened with Ben and Zuma and those guys that, you know, like, okay, something happens with Optic, there's a new tweet like this, Zuma turns on the stream, he's talking about it, maybe he's, you know, just having a good time. Like, okay, I, I think personally today that's great content for the scene and everything, but I can understand why Scott might not be so happy about stuff like that. And, um, you know, kind of what he said there about, oh yeah, I'm going to leak our team's roster when I'm not there next season for views, is like, um, he thinks that's probably not something that you should necessarily be doing, because of course he's not intending to actually do that next season, right? So, just thought an interesting comment, definitely intrigued your perspective on that in the comments below. Some of the stuff like this, right, where Pred to Optic was leaked, then it was warning to Seattle, and then you've got all the guys on stream there, they're saying, oh, you know, I'm getting this big leak here, there's been a development, or it was that Nameless's thing from a couple of years ago, there's been a development, I think it was the Converter stuff that was going on, where Nameless was like, yeah, there's been a new development going on, that was absolute comedy, but uh, yeah, and then Parasite's like, oh, I've got sources telling me this, it's massive news, there's a crazy barn involved, like, um, yeah, it's great content, it keeps the COD scene ticking over, but I can see why the Optic guys obviously wouldn't be so happy about it, or nor would any team, if it was their team under the spotlight, and it's always going to be Optic under the biggest spotlight when there are team changes going down with the organization. Now, quick note as well here. So, Tubark reckons this was a spot that FaZe was saving for the World Championship, which I'm guessing is this one here on Mercado. So, the guy gets a couple of kills, goes up to this wall, and you can see it through the wall, the red dot of the guy that's trying to defuse the bomb and shoot straight through it. So, I mean, yeah, that is uh, pretty unbelievable, to be honest. I mean, here we are, baby. It's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Congratulations to Infinity Ward. But, um, yeah, that is quite the spot, I can't lie. Apparently FaZe had found this one and was saving it for the World Championship, but now it's been exposed to all involved. Maybe the other teams have still got something prepared. It's kind of crazy to think though that some teams like a spot like this, they were saving for champs, not even saving it for a major, saving it for the World Championship already, but it's now been exposed. And also I thought this was kind of cool here, KD ratios in last ever tournament series. I think again we saw these stats before, but some of these have changed right because the other players have stepped away. I think Parasite's now on here despite the fact that, you know, he's kind of back now, so there's been some questions about that. But most players get absolutely ultrified in their last ever series. Like, Crim6 has almost the worst ever at a 0.64 in his final ever series before he retired. Zuma has the best though, 1.14. Zuma, he says, you know, went out fighting, went out snapping, bro, might need to make a return. And he has been joking around the last few days about making that return. I don't know how his wrist feels and stuff when he plays, kind of, because he does hop into matches sometimes just to play on stream. I don't know if his, like, wrist gets a bit sore after a while or whether he feels like he actually could make a return, but he has been kind of frightened the last few days, i got to give it to him. So very much enjoy your thoughts on all this in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.